So have you ever noticed how the whole God thing, uh, the whole concept of God is very linked to fear? Just the whole terminology of it and the lines of persuasion that you usually hear, the, like the common common themes that you hear when you have believers talking about God or, uh, let's say, responding to the more non-believing type of folk such as myself. So a common thing in, in comments, if you have a channel like this, uh, even a sm very small channel like mine, and certainly on much larger uh, contrarian to believers channels let's say uh, a very common thing is oh you're going to suffer in hell this is going to happen uh, you, you'll soon see in the end and you'll burn in hell the more sort of <laughs> the, the more graphic ones anyway and then just some very old very old terminology like he's a god-fearing man I think there's a lot behind those kinds of phrases and the phraseology that you'll hear quite commonly from people who don't really have a lot other than abuse and just trying to essentially scare you into belief um, is not particularly effective uh, if you're any kind of thinking person it's not going to be that persuasive and there's usually a lot of emotion behind it, isn't there? It's very vitriolic on occasion. So it gets when you talk about how uh, God is probably non-existent, there's, the, there doesn't seem that much evidence to suggest that there is a God. And certainly God is very aloof, isn't he? He's very shy. He doesn't make himself that readily apparent. Uh, apart from ancient texts written in the arse end of nowhere and that kind of thing and uh, traditions built around them over hundreds of years. Apart from that kind of thing and what man says about God in organised religions and things like that, we don't have huge amounts of compelling evidence. I mean, yeah, you get the whole the, the whole miracle thing. You do get miracles and or apparent miracles, I should say, and... Uh, personal experience is another one you hear constantly is if someone's personal experience just trumps everything else and you should you should just believe what people say but apart from all of that kind of thing it's not readily apparent is it and so you do often you do often hear this kind of thing it's it's a resort to fear and the debate can sometimes be couched in this from that from their perspective. So you you better believe or else. And it's like, ooh, well, <laughs> I do. I don't really believe in a god in the first place. So it's kind of dark to uh, try and intimidate me into belief. I'm not quite sure that's how belief works. Belief is based on uh, evidence. Can be based on personal experience. I'm not, I'm not denying that. I mean, I've I've just never had the whole personal experience thing myself. So I've never. Uh, had a revelation on the road to Damascus or anything of that ilk so it, that doesn't work with me personally could with other people I mean I, I respect that but it's not something by definition it's not something that's objectifiable is it it's not something that's what most people would traditionally see as proof it's, it's you can't get inside someone's head you can't have the experience that they've had to help you make that decision that yeah maybe god's real maybe god exists but it's not there is it so the following isn't isn't an argument in and of itself it's just a, a few observations on the whole fear aspect to this debate and why i i believe that fear is a, ch a chief and compelling factor at least it is, it is a compelling factor if not the chief factor for a lot of people whether they want to admit it or not behind belief or grudging belief let's say or, or even just delusional beliefs so people say they believe in this kind of stuff but deep down they're skeptical but because of social pressures and uh, other things like that they feel like they have to express a belief in the existence of god a lot of it is just downright fear and that's what i want to explore today so one thing that might motivate this is that with with a God, it's quite compelling for such people because if you didn't have a God, uh, there would be the whole problem of coming up with rules for societies and families and just, just the human experience in general. You'd have to, we'd have to sit back and say, right, it's just us and it's nature. 
and we're going to have to deal with that shit and we're going to have to come up with with rules off our own back we're going to have to think about this rationally and essentially that's what we've done anyway i mean there are, don't get me wrong there's religious traditions obviously there's the religion is prevalent in a lot of cultures but i've said a couple of times in different videos that the whole morality thing and making up rules for society is law just just the broad spectrum of, of rule making let's say it's very practical isn't it and if we're cutting the crap and thinking common sense in a common sense way we can kind of see that it's obvious that we make these rules through necessity we're social animals human beings live in groups we've always lived in groups for as long as we've been homo sapiens for as long as we've been we've always our natural unit is the family group or a smaller group of tens maybe uh, it's only fairly recently in our history that we've scaled up and that we have these huge cities if you look at the whole history of the human experience i.e homo sapiens anatomically modern humans if you want to put it that way uh, conservatively we've been around for about three hundred thousand years it, it's a bit dicey different people say different but let's just say pull it out of our ass and say three hundred thousand years we've been around it, pretty much in the form that we are now the the common unit is just small groups of people in the tens maybe at, at the larger scale it's only very very recently if you're talking a very thin slice of that 300,000 years let's say that we've lived in these huge units that like city states and then eventually you have the nation state which is a very modern thing and then you have these supranational organizations. It's very, very recent. It's like a flash in the pan. You're talking about if you you often hear these analogies, don't you? Of clocks, like the twenty four hour clock, and then you, they try and compartmentalize history. If you if you compart if you translate that into the human experience, so like three hundred thousand years, you're talking like a few seconds. Uh, if you use that analogy, uh, in this instance, you're talking about a few seconds that we've been in these huge units. And so that necessitates complex societies and complex systems of human interaction require rules on a very practical level. And so without a God, a God is very convenient, isn't it? Because you have the justification, it's ready made. The man in the sky says X and he says that this is right, this is wrong. It's easy, it's convenient. and. Another thing about us humans and the animal kingdom in general, I think, I think this is a general principle that's been found in nature as well and has certainly been found in human nature is the path of least resistance. So whatever bloody works is good. And for some reason in our brains, we've developed a predisposition towards spiritual thinking, towards religious thinking. Uh, religion, I'm not denying religion is prevalent in, in the human experience. Of course it is. And so it's very convenient, isn't it? And very scary. If you imagine, imagine if somehow some boffin somewhere scrawling equations over walls and things. Imagine somewhere conclusively there was a way of explaining to people as well so they could understand it. That there was some <laughs> proof that God didn't exist. We just know. I know that's probably never going to happen. And even if some boffin did come up with it, there's going to be many people out there say oh well he does exist because of x y and z and i reject this equation and all that crap but let's say to the vast majority of people god's non-existence is as provable as the laws of motion or some other concrete concept in science let's say that happens to many people that's going to be scary as hell because now that block that foundation the moral foundation a lot of people believe it that so without god there's no foundation for morality. What's right and what's wrong? Heretofore, uh, that was determined by the holy texts and the holy texts in whatever you poison, whatever religions you poison, it said X is right, X is wrong. And now we've got out of the equation. It's scary. It's, it's, it, this is what I'm talking about. It's a lot of this stuff, a lot of the infrastructure of belief in the existence of a deity is couched in fear it's very fear-based which is isn't particularly healthy is it but <laughs> it is what it is and morality and, and rules is is a very human humanocentric thing isn't it so we would 
without the God dimension, we would have to accept that what's probably true, and we know this deep down, that the universe is amoral. Not immoral, it's amoral, i.e. it doesn't really give much of a crap about what we think's right and wrong. The universe just is. And it's probably been around forever, in my opinion, but even if we accept that the universe has just come into existence and it's evolved over time and all of these different systems and ecosystems and uh, just the entirety of it, the sheer complexity of the universe, it's not a moral or immoral thing. There is no right or wrong in the animal kingdom. It's just very apparent and brutal from our perspective of, in, in certain ways I suppose <laughs> the universe is fundamentally from what we can tell amoral and so without a god it behoves us humans us, us grubby humans if you like uh, you aren't made in the image of any bloody god to, to come up with rules and to figure it all out for ourselves and to many people many many people that's a scary thing. It isn't to me. It's a challenge. And certainly to people way, way smarter than me and other and all of these different boffins out there, it's a challenge and it's and it's cool. And that's why you get these great philosophers. <laughs> certainly not me, but you get these great philosophers throughout history that have had a good crack at it. And they're not perfect. No one is. But they look at it from the perspective of, yeah, let's pull our finger out, let's try and figure this stuff out. And without a God, that, that with a God, I should say, that compulsion isn't necessarily there. It's easy, isn't it? It says, oh, well, God says so. Um, this is what's right and what's wrong, and that's it. But without God, it's pretty scary, isn't it? And the other thing I'd, I'd say as well, the, the other area which is somewhat related to it, is that you, you translate this into the personal sphere. So you often hear religious people talk about a plan, don't you? Oh, God's plan. And I find this aspect of things very disturbing is probably the wrong word, but it's I don't find it. This is, by the way, this is obviously opinion, but this is a bloody vlog channel, so it's obviously my opinion. But I find that a bit unhealthy. So you get these people that have a very deterministic way of looking at things Something happens in their life, oh, it's just God's plan, it's just part of God's plan, and they just, again, it's the path of least resistance, they don't have to think too much about it. Something crap happens in their life, and it's all part of the divine plan. And in one respect, it's, it's I can see the appeal of thinking that way, it's, you, you, it's, it's kind of humble in a way, you kind of see yourself as part of the whole, and that you're part of this huge plan and that therefore you have some kind of quasi meaning to your life and I get all that but at the same time I, I find that kind of perspective unhealthy because it's like you just it's just an acceptance of circumstances rather than a uh, an acceptance of the circumstances but then also recognizing that you can take steps to alleviate those circumstances or change those circumstances but sometimes, not every religious person is like this, by the way, but I do find that this is a fairly common attitude. So that something bad to happen, there's a change that needs to be made in someone's life and it's just, oh no, it's God's plan, it was meant to be. It's very deterministic, it's, it's very fatalistic and I just find that kind of thinking sad and pitiable and it just doesn't need to happen. And on the flip side, if you didn't have a God, again, we have our imaginary equation or equation scrawled on a wall somewhere <laughs> so oh god doesn't exist we know definitely imagine that now you've taken that crutch away from those people haven't you so personal responsibility accountability becomes a thing and it's irrefutable at least in that respect i mean you could talk about determinism in a purely secular way but without the whole dimension of there being a god and then god has a plan and somehow we have free will, and yet everything that happens has to be part of God's. I mean, I don't know how it works. It's crazy to me, but this is how some people think. Without that crutch, now you've got to take the personal responsibility and accountability for what's happening. So decisions that you make or things that happen to you, there is no there is no God. So now, now it's all on you. Again, this is quite a scary thing. And there's a lot of fear behind that as well. Some people are like, no, screw that. I need this crutch in place. I need it as an excuse. 
I don't want to, I don't know, pull it out of my ass. I, I don't want to lose weight because uh, I don't need to. Uh, God made me this way. God has a plan. I'll just sail on through my life and that's it. That's that's crap, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> and, and if you didn't have that crutch in place, there might be a culture with a lot of these people where they say, no, well, I need to sort myself out or I need to do X, Y, and Z in my life. Some circumstances have happened to me and now I've got to take accountability. There is no plan other than the plan that I make for myself and the plan that my community has for itself. And I'm part of that. It's not even a case of not being part of something bigger than oneself. I said earlier on about how people like the idea of, of being part of a whole. You don't even need God for that. I mean, bloody hell, you, you can have that feeling in a purely secular way. You can be part of a whole. Why do you think people have children? Because they want to feel like part of a whole. Like, like part of a thing that's larger than themselves they can pass on not just their genes but their knowledge and uh, their way of doing things their culture they feel part of that something that's larger don't they and that's why you have uh, nationalism and things like that it's not always a bad thing sometimes it is but it's not always a bad thing that's that that ties into that kind of thing as well so yeah we've talked about how morality is a thing so without god you don't have uh at least to some people you don't have a proper basis for uh not just morality but for for law let's say so you have the old mosaic law don't you and you have uh the quran quran is the constitution of some countries uh, and it's the basis for law and at least largely in a lot of uh muslim countries so we talked about that and we talked about how without a god and without the so-called divine plan a lot of people not all of them i just want to emphasize that there are many religious people who are very very driven and very have personal responsibility responsibility and all that <laughs> um a lot of them don't and you see them you see them around you see a lot of them and god is a lot of times just used as an excuse as a crutch it's just oh it's god's plan and not just in terms of personal responsibility either but in the wider context of things so some awful disaster somewhere had happened, some bloody war break out somewhere, and you hear it all the time, don't you, in the pages of history, uh, in in news reports, all sorts. Sometimes you hear it in news reports, you hear it all over the place. Oh, it's just uh, an act of God, or it's part of a divine plan. It's, it's something that is prevalent in the cultures of many countries. The final area is an area that is not very popular to talk about it's not something you will hear openly talked about that much although it's an extremely common thing the possibly the most common thing because everyone's going to have to face it and that's death so i think this is a biggie and i think you know where i'm going with this one uh, death is perhaps the primal fear isn't it so it's it's the ultimate fear of everyone fears death and don't yeah, i mean myself included i mean i don't, I don't particularly want to die uh, just like most other people but the whole death thing is a, a galactic sized elephant in the room and fits very well into the context of what we're talking about so there, there's a huge fear behind death and if you again if you have this god context to your life it's 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 very good isn't it it, it makes you feel comforted in in lots of ways as well so if you think about um you may die and you will die but if you believe in the correct imaginary bearded man in the sky then you'll you'll go to a heaven and there'll also be accounting so for evil people like me who who just want to sort of think outside the box i suppose i'll i'll suffer an accounting apparently and i'm supposed to be scared of that and be cowed into just believing in stuff because i'm scared uh, apparently but <laughs> there'll be an accounting anyway for people like me and the people who obediently just accept things and believe in stuff without any particularly compelling evidence uh, they'll be rewarded apparently and so it, but it's very comforting isn't it i know i'm being a bit uh, sarcastic but you get where I've, i'm going with it it's it's comforting isn't it it's very nice to think that everything's ordered in such a way unfortunately life is a bit of a bitch and the older you get the more you realize that uh, life is not black and white but mostly gray 
and it doesn't usually work like that. <laughs> and and that ties into what the other thing I was going to talk about as well. The the death thing is 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 a huge factor here behind a lot of people's belief. Not just your own death as well, but uh, I don't know how to say this. Um, I'd like to be a bit delicate saying it, but if you've lost loved ones, that of course is extremely comforting, isn't it? Especially back in times when. We didn't know as much about the process of life. Not that we know everything at the moment. I'm just saying we know a lot more about the process of life and how diseases affect us. Whereas back in the day, you think about back in medieval times or in the olden days, you, death was very prevalent and you, couples would have many, many children uh, in the double digits, sometimes children, and, and most of them would die. You'd see two thirds of them, the infant mortality rate was through the roof. So if you're in a time, and remember all of these institutions we have today, these these religions, Islam, uh, Christ, the different versions of Christianity and Catholicism, all of all of these different religions, most of them are rooted thousands of years ago, or at least hundreds of years ago, and so they were rooted in such times when fear was very much so a factor, and death was. A living issue for most people now luckily nowadays death is it's still around obviously but it's it's not such a big issue imagine living in uh, 14th uh, mid 14th century england with two-thirds to half the population dropping dead of bubonic plague death would be very much an issue wouldn't it and if it's something you didn't understand people didn't understand what was happening the whole concept of a god wraps it up well doesn't it it explains it all in a in a succinct way and then you can listen to the priest preaching oh it's it's our sins god's punishing us and it, it's very compact it's very easy to understand and add into that add into that mix the concept of an afterlife and also uh, perhaps for people who aren't particularly nice they're, there's they're going to suffer and they're going to go to hell and there's going to be a, it, all of this ties together so you have this accounting it's very comforting. So just it's just in a delicate way. So you think about people like me and and many people out there are skeptical of the existence of a God. Not only are we saying that God probably doesn't exist, almost certainly in my opinion doesn't exist. Um, we're also with that, we're saying, oh yeah, by the way, all that accounting shit is bullshit as well. So you're not going to see your dead loved ones. You're not going to see your dead children. I mean, that's horrible, isn't it? So no wonder why people get so emotional if that's deep down inside their grey matter as they're looking at videos like this. Of course they're gonna of course they're gonna be emotional. I don't I'm not offended by it. I, I pity ninety nine percent of people because I realise behind it is is a lot of this kind of stuff. And they're just human beings and human beings um a lot of human beings are very emotional, can't control their emotions, and I get it taking away the concept of a god probably doesn't exist uh, and you're stabbing at this these emotional crutches you're stabbing at these things and removing them as a consequence along with the fact that god probably doesn't exist so yeah <laughs> i totally get it so the fear of death thing is is a huge factor in in my opinion why why the, the belief in god has been sustained so it's just just i think back in the day given the general ignorance of people in terms of how things work and why things happen the way they do so all the death the disease and things like that not only is is religion and by extension has to be by extension based on the existence of a god people believe in the existence of god and and the rules and religions based around that concept of course the concept of an existence of a deity whatever that is allah or the christian god jesus christ whatever course it's going to be heavily entrenched and that entrenchment is heavily based in fear which is what i've discussed today so yeah just uh, just just a few points not like i say it's never intended as an argument in and of itself and yeah i'm rambling a bit but hopefully if you're a regular to the channel if you watch a couple of my videos you know that this is my kind of style but yeah just a few observations on where i think a lot of the heavy resistance to the idea that there probably isn't a god comes from it's a lot of it and this is why you see some of some of the 
more funnier comments. Uh, I I just <laughs> I just find it quite amusing, funny. So you get very vitriolic uh, comments sometimes. It's just YouTube as well. I mean, it's not even necessarily uh, this subject, although this subject is a touchy subject, but. It's a YouTube thing as well, but some of them are quite funny. I just find it funny, so carry on. It gives me a little laugh in the mornings. But uh, yeah, it's just, I think this is where a lot of this stuff is coming from when you have contrarians, when you have people that um, don't really believe in the existence of God, express it in videos like this. And then the emotional response behind it is, is in my opinion, a product of a very long an entrenched uh, culture of fear that uh, that underlies the whole concepts of these religions and by extension the belief in the existence of a god so yeah a uh, bit of a, <laughs> bit of a long about way of saying that most of these beliefs probably aren't deep down that genuine the people most people are in my opinion as well and a lot of these religions don't necessarily live the principles uh, I think there's, do you remember that uh, line in The Matrix? I don't know if you ever watched The Matrix. It's obviously a very famous film, but there's there's a, a line in it where one of the main characters, Morpheus, says there's a, there's a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. I think that's what he says. And I think with a lot of these people in these religions, they're very much a knowing type of person. Not to say I'm perfect. I mean, I'm, I'm not religious, but I, I do have principles that I try and live by and no one's perfect, but... It seems to me a lot of the time that people know their paths that they've chosen, but they don't very often walk those paths. I mean, how often do people really abide by the rules in their religions, especially in certain countries, if you're talking about Western countries? So, yeah, I I question a lot of these beliefs. And I will say that, that I do question sometimes whether belief in God's existence in a very practical I, I like to look at what people do rather than what they say necessarily because you can say whatever you like and just jerk off online and just say yeah I believe in this and you're wrong and you're this that and the other but it's interesting to focus the microscope on individuals that say they're religious and and look at how they act and do they act the part do they walk the path that they're supposedly on do they actually abide by the rules of their religions and a lot of the time they don't I mean, <laughs> you look at them that they're, they're, uh, there's nothing wrong with being promiscuous i was going to say a lot of people are promiscuous sleep around have sex before marriage and a lot of this stuff is in their holy text so i couldn't give a crap I, i'm very liberal minded you do whatever the hell you like but that's what their religion says so in certain holy texts you can do x y z you can't do a b and c but then People like to pick and choose different rules. But yeah, again, going off on a bit of a tangent, but I think I'll end it there. But the broad point of the video being that a lot of this is not really genuine belief, in my opinion, and it's mostly based on fear, at least in the beginning, and it's developed into a belief, but based on that. And if you dig a bit deeper into why people believe in the existence of a God, a lot of it is emotionally based. And it's based on the fear of not having a basis for morality, having to take personal responsibility and accountability if you don't have a God. There is no divine plan. And then also death and themes of death as well. So there you go. Just (laughs) just a few thoughts on it. I'll end it now because it's getting a bit long. And hopefully see you in the next one. See you later.